Oikava pouted as he sat on the edge of the pool and watched Iwaizumi gracefully swimming in the deepest part. He was so excited when Iwaizumi asked him out on a date. After all, they finally had some time for themselves after being situated in two different parts of the world for so long. But he didn't expect his boyfriend would take him to a pool of all places. He never understood Iwaizumi's need to swim where his legs couldn't reach the bottom. It was stupid and dangerous. Come on, Toru, don't look so constipated. How dare you? I look fabulous as always. Yeah, sure. Are you going to just sit there or will you finally go in the water? Oikawa crossed his arms over his chest. I am in the water, thank you very much. What's the appeal of swimming in the deep water anyway? It's freeing. It's dangerous. What if you suddenly can't swim? You'll drown with the surface just out of your reach. He shuddered. Just the thought made him slightly nauseous. Iwaizume smiled at him and dived to the bottom to swim towards his boyfriend. Oikawa couldn't help but admire Iwaizume's almost dolphin-like movements. He wished he could be this confident when swimming underwater. The usual spiky head surfaced next to him, calloused palm running lightly over his calf. You know I would save you if you were drowning. Oikawa huffed, but squealed inwardly at the image of his own personal lifeguard. A very handsome personal lifeguard. I know, but why risk it? You're such a killjoy sometimes. You are the one to talk. You were the one who was always against my great ideas. You mean the absolutely horrible ideas that were always this close to a potential disaster? As I said, my great ideas. I wanted to spend our day doing something fun. But now, Mr. Iwaizumi Hajime has to take us to the pool. Where is the fun? I don't see it. Maybe you aren't looking hard enough. I am looking and I still don't see it. You could at least take us to the aqua park if you wanted to do your weekly laps. You could swim as much as you would like and I could go to a desert ward or something to relax. Or go on the slides. Iwaizumi raised an amused eyebrow at him. What are you, ten? We have this whole place for ourselves. How often do you manage that? Swimming is fun if you just give it a chance. Never. I'll never forgive you for using our day to do your workout. It's not fair. I thought the main idea of a date is to be together. We are together, aren't we? Yeah, but we were supposed to be doing something nice or romantic. Iwaizume rolled his eyes. Stop complaining or I'll drag you under the water. You wouldn't dare. Iwaizume smirked and Oikawa immediately knew he just made a great mistake. He tried to scramble to his feet, but Iwaizume was faster. He grabbed Oikawa's arm and pulled him into the pool. Oikawa let out a high-pitched yelp, which got cut short by the water in his mouth. He sweated around him in a starting panic. He felt the bottom under his foot and instinctively kicked himself upwards to the surface. He sputtered, coughing out the little water that got into his throat. He threw a murderous look at the grinning Iwaizumi and angrily splashed water at him. I'm going to strangle you. Nah, you love me too much. <clears throat> what was that? Oikawa stuck his tongue out and climbed out of the pool. Iwaizumi snickered. I'm sorry, Toru. Don't be mad. Oikawa ignored him and headed to their things on the bench. Stupid Hajime. He took a shuddered breath. When he got under the water, for a split second, he lost a sense of direction. That split second was enough to send his heart racing in panic, and if he wasn't in the more shallow part of the pool, that split second could have been fatal. He knew Iwaizumi was aware of his dislike for deep water, but he wondered if that was it, or if Iwaizumi knew what exactly he was scared of. Either way, Iwaizumi made him scared, and that was something Oikawa couldn't just forgive him. I'll show you, Hajime. No hugs for you today. We'll see how well you will take that. He was scrolling on his phone, still stubbornly avoiding looking at Iwaizumi, who in the meantime resumed his swimming session. 
He would lie if he said he wasn't a bit worried about the other man when he imagined him in the deep water. But he trusted his skills and wits that he wouldn't put himself in danger. The fear was his and his own after all. He checked the time, huffing quietly and wondering for how long they were going to be there, when a louder splashing of water caught his attention. Um, Toru, can you come here? Oikawa raised his eyebrow, but continued to stare at the screen. What, you need me to help you out? The splashing sounds became more frantic. Uh, actually, yes, come here, please. Oikawa heard a deep pain growl, and his eyes immediately showed up. Hajime? Iwaizumi was holding onto his thigh, apparently struggling to stay above the water, his face scrunched in discomfort. I can't move my leg. Come help me. Just as he said that, he cried out in pain and his head disappeared under the surface. Hajime! Oikawa's heart stopped when he realized Iwaizumi was just in the deepest part of the pool. He dropped his phone and sprinted to the pool. He stopped right at the edge, fear and panic freezing him in place. His eyes went wide as he watched his boyfriend sweating around the water in the hope to get up. For a second, Iwaizumi managed to get his mouth above the surface, taking in a gasping breath. Toru! His head disappeared again. Oikawa's body refused to move his brain supplying him with the fact that those who help the drowning people often drown too. His heart pummeled in his chest. He wanted to cry or scream in frustration, possibly both. God damn it, just move you stupid muscles! Toru! Oikawa squeezed his eyes shut and jumped, the water closing above his head. His chest tightened as he lost his sense of direction again. He forced his eyes open, the chlorine stinging in them. He looked around, regaining his spatial awareness, and made a stroke to the surface. He took a gasping breath and swam towards his boyfriend, ignoring his wildly beating heart and the intrusive panicky thoughts in his mind. Hold on, just a little. He grabbed Iwaizumi's arm and pulled him up with all his strength. He got elbowed into his upper chest, feeling the dull pain spreading to his shoulder, but he didn't care. The only thing on his mind was to get Iwaizumi's head up. I'm here. Stop flailing your arms. Iwaizumi threw his arm around Oikawa and chuckled, breathing heavily. Took you long enough. I thought I'll have to fake fainting to get you moving. Oikawa blinked, confused. He glanced at Iwaizumi's leg, which seemed completely fine and capable of movement and the white grin on Iwaizumi's face. What? I got you. You've just been pranked, my love. I... So you weren't... It's a pool, Toru. I would have to be really unlucky to drown here. Oikawa stared at him with mouth slightly ajar. On one hand, he was relieved Iwaizumi was alright. On the other, though... He clenched his jaw and smacked away Iwaizumi's arm, pushing him away. Toru? Get away from me! He made a few quick strokes, getting out of Iwaizumi's reach and out of the pool. What's wrong? I'm sorry if I hit you. Who cares if you did? Just pretend that you are fucking drowning! He threw his things into his bag, almost tearing the shirt with the force he put it on. I'm out! Screw you and screw your pool date! Strong arms wrapped around his waist. He tried to free himself, but Iwaizumi held him tight. Toru, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you serious? Come on, I just wanted to get you back for that last challenge. I'm surprised you fell for it. My acting was horrible. Oikawa took a shattered breath. You don't get it, do you? Get what? I took too long to get to you. I couldn't... I couldn't jump into the water until you yelled at me. Iwaizumi turned Oikawa around to face him and recoiled a bit upon seeing the tears swelling in the corners of his boyfriend's eyes. Toru, it's not your fault you are scared of deep water. 
I wasn't in any real danger. Even if I had a cramp, I could easily get up. I... Aikawa hid his chest, his hands and voice shaking. But what if it was real? What if you were really drowning? I froze up, Hajime. I couldn't move even when I saw you struggling. I knew I was losing time and that I couldn't lose you, but I just... I couldn't budge because I was terrified I'll drown too. He avoided Iwaizumi's eyes, harshly wiping away the tears. I... I'm not scared of deep water. I'm scared of drowning. And I wouldn't be able to help you because of my stupid fear. I... I'm so sorry. Iwaizumi pulled him into a hug, gently rubbing his back. Don't. I should be the one apologizing. I had no idea. I would never do that if I knew, I swear. Ikeva sniffed, hiding his face in Iwaizumi's shoulder. Why would you even do a prank like that? I'm sorry. I thought it would be fun to see you panic a bit, but... I didn't think that through. Sorry. I'm just... I think I'm more mad at myself. I thought... If something happened... You know how they say you forget your fears when someone you love is in danger? I thought it could happen to me. But I just froze up. I would just watch you drown because I couldn't jump into a stupid pool. Iwaizumi ran his fingers through Oikawa's hair, nuzzling his nose into Oikawa's neck. It's not your fault. That's not something you can overcome in a second. And in the end, you dived in to help me. But... Now, listen. You might took a bit longer, but you still jumped there for me, even though you were terrified. It actually makes me feel safe, you know? Really? Yeah. Because I know you'll be there for me when I need you. Oikawa felt his cheeks warming up. I'm just repaying the debt. You've done so much for me ever since we were kids. I don't think I would come so far without you. You already repaid that by agreeing to be my boyfriend. And if you agree to marry me, I'll be the happiest person in the world. We could even live together after that. No more long distance. Oikawa reddened even more, the heat creeping all the way up to the tips of his ears. You mean you would move with me to Argentina to marry me? Sure, I don't want to wait until Japan allows it. I've heard the southern part is really beautiful. Maybe we could have a wedding there. Oikawa whined and hid his face again. You are such a sap sometimes. Iwaizume grinned. Takes one to know one. He cupped Oikawa's cheek, the setter instinctively leaning into the touch. Are you better now? I'm still mad. Would a trip to the store for some milk bread and an alien film night make you feel a bit better? Maybe. I want a kiss though. Lots of them. And your undivided attention for the rest of the day. And no more swimming on future dates. Iwaizumi smiled and pressed a soft kiss on Oikawa's lips. You got it. <laughs>